Cubase and Noendo are great tools and you can adjust them to your own workflow. So here are five things I changed different from the factory settings. Number one is the toolbox. So here are some MIDI events and one audio event. So when I'm doing a right click, you see we've got the toolbox and here again. But I prefer the context menu. So I go to edit, preferences. I am at the editing tools. And here at the top, you see show toolbox on right click. So let's deactivate this one. Now, when I do a right click, you see we've got the contact menu. Here are a lot of functions that just are working for MIDI. So legato, fixed length, the logical editor, and so on and so on. And when I'm doing the right click now at the audio event, you see we've got all the different features for audio. And now I don't have to click the audio file and then go to audio or project or edit. Just do the right click. And when you want to have the tools, just go to here. You've got all the tools here. And at the media events too, just go here to the top menu or just use the numbers at your keyboard and press one, two, three, and now you've got the toolbox again and the context menu and you can save a lot of time. The second trick is about changing values with the mouse. So here is a short trick. And now I want to transpose the electric piano. So I go to the MIDI event. Here I go to transpose and click with the mouse. And now I can change from zero to two. Okay. But now I want to try to change the value with the mouse and it doesn't work, but we can change it. So we go to edit, preferences, editing, controls, and at the top we see value box, time, control, mode. And it's set to text input on left click. So we change it to increment, decrement on left click and drag. That's it. And now you see I can choose the mouse and via drag and drop, I can change the value. And now I can do a double click. I can put on here the zero or any other number. And the great thing is now I can move this event by drag and drop here to the bar number or when I choose an audio file, go to here, and now I can change the fade in or the fade out. And you can be very, very fast when you change this setting. Number three is about the group channels. You see here we've got the mixer and all the three drum tracks are rooted into the drums. And you can see we've got the snare, we've got the hi-hat and we've got the kick. And now I mute the drums. We don't hear anything and now I unmute. Everything is well, but now let's mute the hi-hat. Okay, and now I mute the whole drum group. And now I unmute the whole drum group. And you see the hi-hats are activated again. I'll show you again, let's mute the hi-hat. We mute the group, we unmute the group. And now we hear the hi-hat. So you can damage your whole mix because you will hear too much signals. And now we change this one too. We go to edit, preferences, and now we are at the BST menu. And here in the middle, we see group channels mute sources as well. Let's take away this one. And now again, let's mute the hi-hat. Let's mute the group. We don't hear anything, great. Now we unmute the drums. Yeah, and that's all we wanted.
Number four is about the arrow keys. When I didn't select any event, you see I'm moving the arrow keys up and down. And now I can choose every track here. But now I select this event here. I move the key up. Now I change the selected event and select a track. And I go up again. Uh, and you see I'm missing two tracks, the group track, the drums and electric piano old. So what? is happening here i can change this so now you see we've got one event more and when i go up now okay it's selecting this track because now we've got this event here and sometimes this makes sense for you but i don't want to have this behavior so i go to edit preferences we are at the editing here and now I choose the option use up down navigation commands for selecting tracks only. And when I did this and selected uh, this track here, not this track, uh, this event, and now I'm using the keys for up and down. You see, I just change the selected track, but I don't choose any other event here. And the last trick is about enable record at selected tracks. Now I've got multiple audio tracks. You see, we've got Peter and Jeanette and vocal beat. And when I switch from Peter to Jeanette, now Jeanette is enabled at record. Now we switch to Peter. And this can be great because now we can record very fast. Hey, Jeanette, what are you doing here? Now we switch to Jeanette and her trick is enabled at record. I'm just cooking for you. And you see, they've got the right name. But sometimes I want to do other things. So when I'm here at this beat and now I want to record some vocal stuff. And now I want to do some editings and go to the electric piano and here. I want to change some settings or I want to change the volume or something else. And when I record now, you see, oh, I recorded at the wrong track. And what I do here, I go to edit preferences, editing preferences and mix console. And you see the option Enable record on selected audio track. You'll see we've got the same option for MIDI track two. And now I go to vocal beat, nothing changes. So I enable record. And now when I want to go to another track, to the electric piano and change something here or to this track, it doesn't matter. The enable record button, button it doesn't change. Now I can record my vocal beats. And it's still recorded on the right track. And for me, it's perfect for ADR recording sessions. You see, here is my session. Here is my folder. I record two different tracks because I use two different microphones. Now let's record them. And now it doesn't matter whether I go to another track because it always records on these two tracks. So these are the five things I changed in the settings of Cubase and Noendo. Just leave a comment and tell me what do you change. And when you get some more questions or suggestions, just leave a comment and just tell me whether you want to have more videos about more settings because I changed a lot. See you. Bye.